You are listening to Open Democracy. Hi and welcome to our new podcast series, I Am Not Your Refugee, with myself, Mahmoud Hasino. I Am Not Your Refugee, a podcast in collaboration with some of the refugee community organizers, activists and artists working to challenge stereotypes around migration. With thanks to the Pulitzer Center for Funding Support. For our first episode, our reporter Barbara Flood talks to three community organizers across three countries. Anas in Turkey, Safdar Salmani in Greece, and Mavis Ramazani in Ireland. We wanted to explore why it's so important that refugees themselves have ownership of their organizations and support. First up is Anas, who's the community liaison officer with Small Projects Istanbul. Every refugee himself has a special story and a sensitive story. So understanding every detail and single detail of people is not easy. So that's why uh, someone from the, the community themselves can understand and also deal professionally uh, with their experiences, with their uh, needs. This is a very important uh, for the refugee context. In my experience uh, with the SPI, I, I uh, focused on you know, helping and supporting people to be more initiative, more uh, depending on themselves. So uh, this is, if you can say, my it was my mission. The way that I did it, I encouraged people to search. So instead of giving the solution uh, without teaching how to get it, for example, if you need to get a, uh, an appointment uh, for a hospital, so instead of I, me getting them the appointment, I teach them how to do it. The second thing that I focused in is that I encouraged them to share their experience uh, with other community members. So some of them, some of the leaders, seem to be able to get the experience and then give it back to their own communities. Uh, recently, uh, we uh, could achieve uh, and start uh, a community council from the community themselves, mainly to understand in a wider way the problems, uh, suggest solutions, and learn to advocate their needs. So uh, this is not only me, it is all of our team now. We are proud of uh, this step that we have reached, uh, uh, which is creating the community council uh, uh, from our community. Some of the the, the community members uh, are able to donate. We had uh, an open space that is not observed uh, by any cameras that anyone can give and anyone can take. So we focused on dignifying donation and getting the donation. So uh, uh, we feel it that it is a, a strong network uh, within the community themselves. With the support that we provided, the community developed to be more strong, more connected, uh, more initiative, and also to get the leadership for uh, many of them. As much as you are close to the community, you, you achieve uh, more impact because uh, you give them what they ask you don't need to be theoretically thinking. Also, you get the right feedback and the, uh, the amount of feedback needed to develop better projects. All of us are humans. So uh, when they are refugees, when the community became refugees, they were in their country, lead, maybe leaders. So restoring their rights back, supporting them to be uh, maybe leaders as they were is something yani, similar to be human. Working with the community means to give them back their uh, own characteristics related to humanity. For many refugees who work supporting their communities, they do so as volunteers. Safdar Salmani is one of these community volunteers who works with One Happy Family and Wave of Hope for the Future on Lesbos in Greece. 
Barbara Flood met up with him to talk about his work. Fionn MacArthur, an Irish filmmaker who's been facilitating photography and filmmaking classes on the island, interprets. I'm Safdar Salmani. I'm from Afghanistan. Safdar starts off by explaining how he came to start volunteering with one happy family. I was happy to be with my family for a day. The first time that he came across this organization, it was in uh, Old Moria camp. And uh, there was a group of guys who were working and he asked him, uh, what's this about? Like, And he inquired about the organization and that's how he first uh, met the organization. They were look, said they were looking for a carpenter at this time and it was perfect. Uh, Saftar said he's a carpenter and he started uh, for two months he was working with them. So he, uh, he built a school uh, for two months. He, he built, in this time he built a school inside the jungle of Moria. Uh-huh. So this was uh, February in 2020. Mm-hmm. So after the time of the Moria fire, he this time he went to One Happy Family, and from there he started working at One Happy Family. Mm-hmm. For three months here, he was working here with the gallery, getting it set up. Um, he built everything, the tables, everything to get it up and running. And um, and then after that, uh, he started more work inside the camp. So he was also helping to find artists uh, for the gallery. And uh, he would go around people uh, tents inside the camp and ask people if they were interested in mm. in working and, and doing artwork here inside the gallery and to come to the city. Mm. So uh, they had uh, at that time uh, 20 artists that were here and uh, that were working inside the gallery. camp. He was very, uh, he's very happy as well for the refugees to be able to come here and uh, to, uh, you know, do something that is very fulfilling and uh, happy for them and uh, that they can then, you know, they're hoping that they, they can have a good day uh, each day when they're coming here. I have some photos from the children he wants to show you. This is electrical cable. Jesus. Katanakas. This is dangerous. Are there people? There's still tents, still like a shel- there's shelter tents or what? And it's Khaima that I actually can't. Are Khaima has? Yes, they have tents. Not in the old days, but now they have Khaima has. Still, they have tents inside the camp. Yeah, like this was supposed to be a temporary for. Was it? It's two years now. It's two years since now. the fire, was it? Yeah. Over two years. Yeah. There's no playgrounds in the camp. No, 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 no. parks, nothing. No. Before in Old Moria, like people made some themselves. Always they were making swings, things like this. But with the new camp, they don't have any of this. So all of these children, they're like uh, four, but four years old. Four years. Mm. And uh, they're playing with this. In Bari is cement, Yochi. This is cement. They're playing with the dry cement, you know. Okay, so I mean, 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 so if, for example, if one person comes from the camp, comes here and uh, is doing uh, any work, like painting, everything, he says like this uh, will bring him happiness. You know, this Because it brings them happiness, also he too is, becomes happy. From the heart he feels happy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
So he said that um, from yeah the first days that he was here, the first time that he was in Moria camp, um, seeing all that fighting and everything, he couldn't believe it. He, seeing all of this uh, inside the camp and the environment of the camp, that people were like this, and um, so he had to get away from this. Like he had to separate himself from this and focus away, away from these things. If it makes one person happy, he himself is happy for this. That was Safdar Salmani in conversation with Barbara Flood, with Fayon MacArthur interpreting. My name is Mavis Ramazani. Mavis Ramazani works with Masi, the movement of asylum seekers Ireland. I got involved with Masi because of my own personal experience. I'm now a refugee living independently, but I was an asylum seeker and experiencing the inhumane condition where I was, it made me realize that I needed to be my own voice. I need to talk about what is happening. And also to build a community, it was very, very important for me to build a community to share my own um, very difficult circumstances and um, situation that I was faced with personally. And as a people's person, as a person who believes in building bridges and communities, I realized even around me, other people who were there seeking asylum were you know, experiencing a lot of injustice, inhumane conditions. And I found uh, Masi, it was mostly personally what I was going through. And from there, I decided, you know what, I am going to be actively involved. And I realized when you are your own voice, you know, you share your own experiences as part of moving on and being part of change. Uh, so yeah, basically that were the two main reasons, personally and also seeing what was happening around me for a community that I was very much part of. If you don't build your own voice, the government, individuals who are involved will not uh, uh, change, bring the change. We need to be out there, talk about these issues and also bring in solution at the same time. Like there is uh, now a right to work, which was implemented in 2018. That right to work, the, the government didn't just say, okay, now I'm going to give people seeking asylum the right to work. No, an individual took the government to court, to the Supreme Court. But before the Supreme Court, they were actively advocating for the change and we saw that that change come to pass just a quick note for anyone outside of ireland direct provision is the asylum system set up 20 years ago in ireland originally designed to be a short-term solution many people spend years of their lives stuck in these centers there are plans for it to be abolished soon but as of now it's still here Ending the direct provision and respecting people would make Ireland even better than it is right now. But the reality is there is that racism and discrimination because you are an asylum seeker. You have to pay a price for coming to seek international protection in the country, you know, where there's so many rules and policies that block your way, like even the, the lack of recognition of um, qualification, people's driving licenses, and even the amount of time that you need to wait before applying for right work. The right to work is there, but there's racism, there's discrimination. Even once you have it, you only it's only valid for 12 months, and some employers will not take chance, for instance, with you. We should not give up on the power of communities. 
as someone who comes from Africa, we believe in Ubuntu. Ubuntu is communities being there for each other. Right now, even after being processed, the people who look after you are the community. Throughout this process, there is no government official that looks and see what you need. You know, how are you surviving? You know, how is life after your application? It's your application. The only time you interact with the government is when you go for an interview and then you get your decision. That's it. But your day-to-day -day life is with communities. And the current system of direct provision isolates, um, you know, isolates the community from doing what they are capable of doing. And as we know, people who come to seek international protection are individuals who are very talented. Ireland is rich to have all of us here. You know, there's so much diversity. There's so much richness in, in, in individuals who are now part of Ireland. <laughs> As Masi, we have done well throughout the COVID. During the, 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 the COVID, there was a group of individuals who were sent to Kahesavin. And individuals protested because they got sick, they were in inhumane conditions, and it was covered, and then individuals were, were transferred. So that was a success for us continuously, despite with the COVID restrictions. Last year as well, we advocated give healthcare workers in direct provision who are still going through the C permission to remain in the country as a way to show their appreciation because they also, like all other frontline staff, put their lives, you know, um, in danger. There was also one gentleman who went on hunger strike. He was, I believe, a security guard, you know, and they didn't want to give him permission to, 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 to remain, whereas throughout pandemic, he was working. He was part of the frontline staff during that time, and he had to go through, and Masi was supportive to say, you know what, if you believe, go for it, fight for your own rights. And he was then granted um, permission to remain. And we have seen deportation orders being revoked, you know, with advocacy, petitions being, being sent out there uh, by Masi. So those are some of the few, you know, but very major and life-changing advocacy and campaigns. We can change together a lot of things into our community that are not benefiting our community, that are bringing harm into our community. Whichever, whichever way we came in Ireland, once you have a community, you are strong, you are better. Bridges keep building. You know what people are capable of. And there we go. They shine. You have been listening to Mavis Ramazani of Masi, the movement of asylum seekers Ireland, and before her, Safdar Salmani, with the wave of hope for the future and one happy family on Lesbos, Greece, with thanks to Fionn MacArthur for translating. And at the start of the program, Anna of Small Projects Istanbul. Thanks too to Omar Al-Kilani, who wrote and performed our theme music, and Haya Halau, who designed our artwork. Next episode, we'll be talking to journalists with lived experience of seeking refuge and exploring various aspects of the media and migration. Until then, thanks for listening. From me, Mahmoud Hasino, and our producer, Barbara Flood. Goodbye for now. been listening to a podcast supported by Open Democracy. If you liked it, please consider making a small donation to help us do more. As a small media organisation, Open Democracy relies on the backing of people like you to keep going. Go to opendemocracy.net now to support our work. And one more thing, 
to avoid missing out on future episodes, don't forget to subscribe to this show in your favourite podcast app.